My research considers the importance of space in an economy, and in particular the labor market. When we talk about the national labor market, what we're really referring to is a collection of geographically distinct markets, or cities. And the reason I think a city makes a more natural unit of analysis for a labor market uh, is the simple fact that uh, a city is the, the area in which a person is constrained to live and work within a period of time. So the question is, does this matter to the economy at all? Does the very fact that an economy is organized into geographically distinct markets, can that affect the dynamics of a labor market? How do people choose where to live and work? And ultimately, uh, can we improve the allocation of workers over space? When you think about the question of where people choose to live and work, you quickly realize that there are many dimensions of heterogeneity between cities. For example, there could be differences in the underlying industry composition, and this leads to differences in productivity, uh, pro the productivity of workers at a point in time, and the productivity uh, over time, how it transitions over time. There are also differences between cities in housing markets. Uh, in some cities, uh, it is difficult to add housing. They're constrained by space. They're, they don't have very much uh, available land. There's perhaps a lot of housing regulation. It's difficult to add quantity, and therefore, it's difficult to add workers. There are other types of cities where this is not true. There's a lot of land available. There's low regulation. We can add a lot of quantity. And then there are still more cities which uh, have an oversupply of housing. Cities also differ in their uh, naturally endowed geographic features. Their point in space, some are close to other cities, some are uh, far away. Uh, and then ultimately there are differences such as weather and uh, other amenities that determine how, how much people value a city, how much they would like to live there. So because of all these uh, dimensions of heterogeneity, I like to think of the term space broadly. If, if there were not differences in productivity between cities, then we wouldn't care about space at all. So fundamentally, that is, is an important part of what I mean by space. A little more concretely, though, is the actual geographic distance. So uh, geographic distance between cities can result in uh, relocation costs. And migration literature has consistently found that uh, there are significant costs uh, to workers relocating between cities. But I also think of housing as a form of a moving cost. And what I mean is that uh, if there's a housing price increase in a city, that acts as a barrier to entry to workers who might otherwise choose that destination. And similarly, if there's a housing price decrease in their origin, that reduces their incentives to exiting the city. And then finally, the differences in uh, amenities, weather, and things like that can lead people to have non-labor and non-housing market uh, preferences for cities. So with all of this intuition as background, the goal of my research is to empirically estimate the importance of space. In my job market paper, what I, my, what I do is form a dynamic spatial equilibrium model to try to estimate the size of frictions in the economy and then uh, quantify uh, the difference in, in frictions in an economy without space. And the reason it's a dynamic spatial equilibrium, well, it's dynamic because the migration decision uh, is, is a dynamic decision for a worker because of moving costs. If they have to pay a cost to relocate, they're going to weigh uh, current costs against uh, future benefits. The spatial element is because of all the dimensions of heterogeneity I, I just uh, explained. And the equilibrium part is so that I can study what happens to the aggregate economy, not just what it means for an individual city, but what does this mean for the dynamics and the efficiency, the allocative efficiency of the aggregated economy, the collection of cities together. And I find that if we were to reduce moving costs or if we were to reduce the importance of housing in, in an economy, we could find a, a meaningful increase in worker mobility across locations and that could lead to um, an improved allocative efficiency. We might see a decrease in the unemployment rate of the order of a fifth of a percentage point uh, up to even a full percentage point. So far, my research has really convinced me that uh, there's much more we need to know about space in an economy, and especially in an equilibrium setting. We can think about the local dynamics of individual cities. Uh, we can think about differences in population growth between cities, how firms locate across points in space. All of these are issues that can be explored by uh, the type of model that I've developed. And my hope is that by considering how space impacts the functioning of an economy, uh, we as economists can do a better job of modeling what happens to an aggregate economy and get a better measure of what is efficiency in a full aggregate economy. <laughs>